Hello, and welcome to this masterclass on choosing the right nanopore sequencing device for you. I'm Brian Catano, a technical application scientist based out of the New York City office for Oxford Nanopore Technologies. In this masterclass, we will cover an overview of nanopore flow cells, nanopore sequencing devices, and choosing the right combination for your sequencing needs. Among the many advantages that the nanopore sequencing platform offers is that it scales precisely to your experimental needs, in part thanks to this range of three different flow cell uh, types that we have available. On this slide, we'll see the three different offerings with typical throughput ranges in the top image. Uh, to give you a quick example before we dive more deeply into each of these flow cell types, the Flongo flow cell works well for experiments requiring one to two gigabases of data. The MinION flow cells enable experiments requiring 10 to 30 gigabases of data. And the Promethion flow cell facilitates higher throughput experiments needing 100 to 200 gigabases of data. The best in-field throughput achieved by our customers is not noted in brackets and in bold. Uh, to give you an understanding of exactly how our users are pushing the, the boundaries of these flow cell types in the field for their experiments. Uh, and then underneath that, uh, under TMOs, the theoretical max output for each of this, these flow cells. The bottom left panel shows the number of active pores that each flow cell type is able to sequence from in real time. So these are the number of pores that can sequence DNA or RNA in parallel at any instance in time. Uh, please note that the minion and permethion flow cells can have many more total pores than these numbers listed, but this is how many are able to sequence in parallel. So how do these values correspond to biological experiments? If we look at each of these flow cell types uh, in more detail, the Flongo flow cells uh, can typically generate one or two gigabases of, of native DNA reads if you're looking at those medium length, say 25 KB uh, DNA fragments. And this makes it ideal for sequencing plasmids or, or for smaller viral or bacterial genomes. Uh, but it's also very well suited for targeted sequencing applications. So if you're interested in gene panels, uh, you can target particular genes of interest. And this can be multiplexed uh, to drive down that cost per sample uh, and can also be performed either with or without PCR. We have native DNA offerings available. Another interesting use of Flongal flow cells is as library QC. So you can take a small amount of a library load that onto a Flongo flow cell and sequence for an hour to see how that library is performing before you commit that library to a higher throughput flow cell. And this is especially critical when you are limited in the amount of sample that you can get and you want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your pressure samples possible. On a minion flow cell with 512 pores, this corresponds to 10 to 20 gigabases of ultra long reads. So these are reads with read and 50s above 50 kilobases it can go up into several megabases in length as individual reads. Uh, for more medium sized reads of about 25 kilobases, you can uh, routinely generate 10 to 30 gigabases of total data. Um, and if you're interested in sequencing SARS-CoV-2, that's equivalent to about 12 uh, full-length viral genomes from RNA to answer in under eight hours. On a Promethion flow cell with the 2,675 pores we saw previously, this corresponds to 50 to 100 gigabases of ultra-long reads, 100 to 200 gigabases for medium-sized reads of about 25 KB, uh, and over 100 million reads for shorter fragments, such as cDNA transcripts or, or amplicons. These are just a few examples for each flow cell type, but there are so many more applications that you can do with this platform, from direct methylation detection, chromatin confirmation capture. You can sequence RNA natively without having to convert into cDNA. And you can sequence at any length from as short as 20 bases to over megabase uh, length reads.
So here is how our flow cells pair with our different device offerings uh, to scale to any of your sequencing needs. The Flangol and the Minion flow cells can be run on a Minion Mark 1B device connected to your own computer via USB. Um, they can also be run in the all-in-one Mark 1C or Gridiron devices. Whereas the Promethion flow cells can be utilized with the Promethion P24 device, a P48 device, or the new P2 devices. So not only do the number of pores scale according to flow cell types, but the number of flow cells that can be run in parallel also scale to your needs depending on the device type. Uh, this plot gives you a general overview of the total throughput you can achieve per device, and we'll see more details per device shortly. Before we get to these details, here's just a slide comparing all of these offerings for you to reference. Uh, this is just to give you an overall understanding of how these devices lay out uh, and to sort of show you the size as well. These are all portable or benchtop devices. These are not very large server rack cabinet size devices, so they're very easy to accommodate in, in all environments. Apart from the Mark 1B and the P2 Solo devices, these all have compute power built into the device as well, which we'll see shortly. The Minion Mark 1B device um, utilizes the Minion and Flongo flow cells, and this connects to your own laptop or computer via USB 3.0. Uh, the USB port is used both to power the device as well as offload the data coming from the flow cells uh, where DNA or RNA are sequencing within the nanopores uh, to your local computer for downstream base calling and analysis. The Minion Mark 1C device replaces the need for a separate computer by putting all the necessary compute inside the device. So it has a GPU for accelerated base calling. It integrates a touchscreen for you to interact with Minnow, which is the sequencing and analysis software. And it makes it very highly portable and, and field ready. Uh, you can take these just about anywhere in the world and do sequencing on site as needed. The Gridiron Mark 1 device takes this a step further by integrating even more powerful compute and a higher end GPU directly into the device uh, with five Minion boards on top. So the Gridiron is specifically designed to allow you to run up to five individually addressable Minion or Flongo flow cells to parallelize your sequencing that way. So note that you can stop and start each position on demand without requiring you to fill the device to capacity with five flow cells to sequence. So this gives you the most flexibility possible. You can start one experiment on one flow cell today, start a different experiment with a different sample tomorrow in another position, and you can even group multiple flow cells into one experiment um, within the, the UI quite, quite easily. The Flongol is an electronic adapter that allows you to utilize the single-use, low-cost Flongol flow cells inside of a Minion or a Gridiron device. So recall the five individually addressable positions on the Gridiron that we saw on the previous slide. These can run Minion flow cells, they can run Flongol flow cells, and you can even mix and match these to cater to your experimental needs. In this example image, we see three um, Flongol uh, adapters with three Flongo flow cells inserted within them on this grid ion in addition to two Minion flow cells. The Promethine devices are the highest throughput options, uh, utilizing those Promethine flow cells with the 2675 pores we saw previously. Uh, and these also scale in the number of positions that can be run uh, in parallel. So the P2 device can run up to two individually addressable Promethion flow cells, while the P24 and P48 devices can run up to 24 or 48 Promethion flow cells, respectively. Uh, and this really opens a door for generating large, large amounts of sequencing data uh, for those high-end, high-throughput applications. 
So you're looking somewhere on the order of about seven, seven terabases per run with a P24 or up to 14 terabases per run with the P48. And as you're sequencing, you get access to these data immediately. So you don't have to wait for the um, end of the run to finish for you to access your data. You can pull them off as they're being saved to disk and uh, begin your downstream analysis immediately with all of these devices. So before looking at a couple of example applications to see how to apply these things that we've covered, I wanted to mention adaptive sampling. This uh, is a really neat application that enables software-based enrichment rather than library-based, where during a sequencing run, you can have the software look at the molecule that's currently sequencing through a particular pore and have it make decisions about whether to keep or reject this molecule, depending on if you want to enrich for particular target sequence or you want to deplete some, some other background sequence. Uh, and in real time, the software is able to um, either uh, make no decision and allow the read to continue through the pore to get your sequence data, or it can reverse the voltage around that pore and flick out whatever that read is uh, to reject it from sequencing and open up that pore for another molecule. Uh, so this sort of in silico uh, enrichment method doesn't require any additional library preparation, and it's something that you can very easily enable when you're starting your run just through the Minnow UI. Um, so adaptive sampling is uh, now available on MinIon and Flongo flow cells integrated directly into the UI, and it will be uh, coming soon to the Promethion flow cells as well. So to look at a few other example areas. Uh, in selecting the right device for you, we do need to look further than the broad application area and focus on your specific experimental needs. So for example, if you're a cancer researcher, you might be interested in looking at variants and select genes uh, to give one example. And so the MinION and GridION options would be very well suited for this. While if you're interested in whole genome or whole transcriptome experiments, you can utilize the Promethion flow cells, either on the P2 device or the P24. And if you have very large scale cancer genome sequencing projects, um, this may require the full capacity of the P48 device or even multiple P48 devices uh, running concurrently. In the genomic epidemiology space, uh, the MinION devices are great options for rapid SARS-CoV-2 viral genomes uh, to sequence in the field or in a point of care setting with plenty of room for multiplexing samples to bring down that cost per sample. If you plan to sequence SARS-CoV-2 routinely and at scale, uh, the GridION is being used uh, to great success for this by groups all over the world. And for taking this a step further, if you're interested in, as an example, host response research, uh, the Promethion options can give you um, whole human transcriptome analysis and make that really routine for you. I hope this presentation has helped introduce our various flow cell and device offerings. But if you're looking for more detailed comparisons, please have a look at our product comparison page linked at the top. Uh, it's just nanoportech.com slash products slash comparison. You'll find more technical details, uh, device specifications, price per gigabase, and, and much, much more. So you can figure out exactly what's needed for your experimental needs. And if you have any questions, please free, feel free to reach out to our sales or our technical teams. Uh, who can help you decide um, what's going to be best suited for your applications. Thank you so much for joining this Masterclass series. Please be sure to check out our other Masterclasses to learn more about our platform.